So that house is cold because they don't have uh, firewood. Oh no, look at the firewood. Uh oh. Uh, Oh, I didn't spot that one creeping up on me. Let's see, we've got plenty of logs. Well, we're going to have to put more people on labouring. help if we had more coal because coal is another source of heating but wow straight from straight from a food crisis to a firewood crisis uh, what time of year is it late winter right we're going into spring so as long as we don't get another cold snap we should be okay Population's 109 now. 109 hungry, cold and sick. <laughs> and not as happy as they were. Although they're still fairly... For, for a population where they've had a mass die-off of starvation, they're still fairly mm. cheerful. Yeah, there's... Um, there's interesting things going on. Let me Let me show you this. So, achievements. What I'm trying to do is get all of these achievements. And this is the problem one. So we've achieved mountain men. But to get mountain men, we had to do it on a small mountainous map. And uh, with a harsh climate. Now that means that we've got very little area that we can exploit. But we also want to get isolationist so that means that we can't have a trading post until we've got 300 citizens we want to get one with nature so that means that we can't have crops or orchards or pastures until we've got 400 so that means we can only get by with gathering and fishing And there's one more which is causing us a problem. And that's the uneducated. Where is it? There's a dunce award. So there it is. Okay. So 300. We need to get to 300 citizens before we can build schools. So as soon as we hit 300, that's it. We've got the achievement and then we can build schools. As soon as we can get to this point, so we don't have to hold it on three, we just need to tip 300. They don't need to be healthy, they, nothing at all. We just need to get to 300 and then we can build schools. Uh, but to achieve 300 on this map, we got to 200 and then had a crisis. Now what we're trying to do now is manage our way back from a crisis. So we went into starvation, couldn't feed 200 people, um, or we'd just grown too fast. So there was too many kids, there was, uh, the, the, it had expanded so fast that the houses were in the wrong place for where their jobs were and yeah, so it, it wasn't running as efficiently as it needed to run to be able to support 200 people. So what we're trying to do now is build up enough of a food reserve that when the population ramps up, 
we can take it back into the unsustainable size again so because as soon as we hit 300 population and we get the uneducated uh, that doesn't need to be a sustainable population we can hit 300 and then we can allow it to die back again but to do that we're going to need a huge food reserve um, and at the moment we're doing well just to have the, the amount of food going up so yeah we're um, uh, the, our store tools are coming down so we need to keep an eye on that um, we haven't got enough herbs because our herb lists all died off and we had to focus on food um, we've the woodcutters were actually doing fine. They were the woodcutters were keeping on top of providing enough fuel for uh, for 200 population, uh, but that was while we also had miners mining coal. So we dropped the miners down to I think we ended up down at two or three miners. So we're just starting to creep up the number of miners because uh, if they can produce coal, coal's more efficient than uh, than firewood for heating houses. So it's just whether they can do it in time. So we at least now we have enough labourers. The produce is being moved around, so although we've got a few houses unheated, everybody's got a neighbour with a warm house, so that's okay. I think we might seriously have to consider. rid of some houses to stop them from breeding. It's uh, it's a shame that we actually have to destroy them and we can't sort of pause them so ah hang on now that's a thought. Oh that looks like she just found herself a partner. Um, if we kick them out to upgrade and then pause the upgrade, can we do that? No, we can't. Oh, worth a try. So we've got some homeless people. Uh, they will starve though. But yeah, just as an experiment, let's see what happens. Once. So we've got no builders. Let's. Um... Increase the number of gatherers. So if we've got no builders, does that mean that this house can't be upgraded? Let's just leave that like that for the moment and have a look at this hunter. How's the hunter doing? Uh, This might be a good sign. This might be a sign that, because uh, we're, we're only part way through the season. Are they going to collect more than 320? Or have they just stopped hunting? Uh, 
I'm going to increase the gatherers and the fishermen. Yeah, it just doesn't look as though increasing the number of hunters increases the number the amount of meat. I think what we'd have to do is increase the number of hunting cabins. But they take up quite a large footprint. Hmm. Oh god, 37 children. Can we evict anybody else? Well, I've had a good think about this and I've come up with a new strategy. And it's controversial. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is... I'm going to kick pretty much anybody and everybody out of their house. There's one. Okay, well you shall lose them too. What I want to do is reduce the population dramatically. And the best way to reduce the population is to kick them out of their houses. that that's about the right number of people because that's the only thing I've not really been able to calculate is exactly how many houses to keep but what we want to do is to bring the population down to a sustainable number and that should be below the 100 mark. Okay, right, I, and I'm going to start reducing the number of things. So Cut down on the number of fishermen. We'll get them down to about 40. The number of gatherers I'm going to bring down as well. population doing now? 103? So we're still on 130 including the children. Okay, so fact that we've... Oh, this sounds terrible but I really needed some of those children to die. 
we just couldn't support the number of children that we had with the number of adults that we've got. So what I'm trying to do here is a managed decline. Just under 10 to go. Okay, let's start reducing numbers again. I want one herbalist. I'm going to keep my two blacksmiths and I'm going to keep my large number of miners for the moment. But Laborers on about four. So we'll probably see some people freezing to death as well as um, dying of starvation. sitting behind this. Okay, let's reduce the fisherman again. And the gatherers. Aren't gatherers down to about 22? In fact, we'll take it there now. So we should be about there. We're around the 100 mark now. And this should be sustainable. We just need to get the right balance. But we've gone through quite a fast decline. So it's quite possible that we've got a lot of imbalance around the place. So a few more people will die off yet from starvation uh, as the game sorts itself out. So I expect we'll drop a little bit lower yet. to do is get to the point where we have a growth in resources without the population increasing. So I want to hold, if we can get to a stable uh, balance on around 100 population, then we should see the resources starting to increase because a hundred can maintain themselves. Now, 
the tricky thing is going to be coping with the tools because I'm not sure that we're going to be able to make enough tools. So they're producing coal, they're producing coal. And we've got... We've still got two woodcutters. But the fuel, we're still out of fuel. So even though we've got two blacksmiths, they are going to struggle to prioritise the resources. To keep everybody in tools. 